Hello, everyone, and welcome to our latest online event here at the University of California Merced. My name is Ricky Hill, and I'm an e-recruiter here at UC Merced. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We are welcoming all of our Bobcats. We are so thrilled that you could be here with us as we start to welcome you to the start of your academic journey here at UC Merced. This evening, you are in for quite the treat. We are going to be focusing on the School of Engineering. So go ahead and get those questions ready. We do have an opportunity for a live question and answer session. At this time, before we get started, let me give you a couple of quick tips. If you would like to adjust your audio settings, you can do so in the lower left corner of your screen by clicking the audio settings button. If you would like to adjust the size of your window, you can do so by clicking view options in the upper portion of your screen. Once again, as I mentioned, we will have an opportunity to answer your questions live. Please take advantage of the Q&A button in the lower portion of your screen. You can send us your questions and we will get to those throughout the presentation. We definitely want you to stick around for that live Q&A. We have an expert panelist that will be answering those questions. Once again, my name is Ricky Hill. We are thrilled that you could join us this evening. At this time, I would like to hand things over to our first presenter, my colleague, Carla. Thanks so much, Ricky. Hi, everyone, and good evening. My name is Carla Gonzalez. I am the Director of Undergraduate Advising for the School of Engineering. And I am going to give you guys a quick presentation before we open up for question and answer. Just so that you guys are aware, today you guys will be hearing from me for a couple of minutes, and then you'll be hearing from some of your peers and getting some tips, tips uh, from them as well as to how to be successful at UC Merced. So feel free to start asking your questions in that Q&A section. All right, so just a little bit about the School of Engineering. We have six undergraduate majors, bioengineering, civil engineering, which is new to the fall 2021 cohort. So any student in the first year that came in is able to declare, fall, uh, declare civil engineering this fall semester computer science and engineering, environmental engineering, material science and engineering, mechanical engineering as well. So we also have two minors in the School of Engineering. One is called the Management Analytic and Decision Making Minor. And the second one is brand new, again, to this fall 2021 cohort. It is Material Science and Engineering. Any student transfer or continue will be able to declare Material Science and Engineering. For all minors, you guys do have to have a GPA to be able to declare minors, so you will have to wait until your second term to be able to declare minor, but that's not a problem at all. You guys are very patient and they will do so. The same goes with majors at this moment. If you'd like to declare or change majors and you're a first year student or a transfer student, uh, know that the time or the window for having changed majors as a first year student has already ended. Uh, and you will have the next opportunity to do so at the end of fall semester. For my transfer students, it is very unlikely to change majors. So if any student is a transfer student and wants to change majors, I am your direct academic advisor. So please feel free to email me directly and we can discuss you changing majors or the possibility of that um, as soon as possible. So, Coming to UC Merced does provide you with a well-rounded education. We do both theoretical and practical, and we do a very big hands-on approach. Many of our classes have lab components to them, and we have state-of-the-art equipment. Since we are the uh, new, newer UC, we do always have buildings coming up, and we have a lot of new labs opening up and a lot of new and fancy equipment for you guys to play with. So some of the things that we do as part of your well-rounded education is that we ask that you participate in team design projects such as engineering service learning that you can get involved in from your very first semester. It's called Engineering 96 to start off with and you can ask your academic advisor about that and they'll be able to help you know when is the appropriate time for you to start taking that class. The other thing that we do is that we do have capstone uh, capstone design, where most of our students, except for our computer science and engineering students, will participate in capstone. That is a two semester process now. And the way that it works is that you work with your peers 
and you guys work on a project that is either um, designed by the university or designed by uh, an industry partner and you'll work to accomplish a goal that is established by that industry partner or the university as well. So Capstone Design is one of the great um, team design projects that you guys will be able to participate in. For my computer science and engineering, you guys do software engineering, which, which is similar, but it is more targeted towards your major. All of our students who participate in Capstone Design and the software engineering end up participating in what is called Innovate to Grow. Innovate to Grow is a competition that happens at the end of every single term. And we have industry partners and a lot of other people that will come on and they will um, evaluate how the teams have been doing throughout their time. We also highly encourage students to get involved in undergraduate research. Again, this is to make sure that you have that well-rounded education. So one of the things you guys like to know is where do you see Merced engineers go? This is a very small list of where some of our students will go. And as you can tell, they go to the spectrum of different locations. And our students will also go across the country to different places and different companies. Our students end up getting, being selected in a, in a variety of different um, industries. And when you're thinking about industry and you're thinking about how do I get there, where do I go to to get to that job that I wanna have, you have to think about your educational journey. You have to think about how you started off in primary school or elementary school, you went on to middle school, high school. You're currently now pursuing your undergraduate degree, but maybe there's more to it. Maybe you end up doing a master's degree or a PhD. Maybe after your PhD, you do a postdoctoral program and you participate in that and that all leads you to your job and careers. The reason why I bring this up now is so that as you're talking to the, your peers and to students that you start thinking about what that long-term effect is. And so some of the students will tell you the activities they participate in um, and it will tell you everything that they're currently doing they're outside of their coursework, right? To be able to be, be as proactive and be as competitive as possible for those jobs. So thinking about what job you want and how you get there, does it require a master's? Does it require a PhD? Would you get there quicker if you had a master's degree? This is all part of your educational journey as you're barely starting off to start considering all of these things. As I said, as you're considering everything that you're doing to prepare for, these, for this career that you would like to have, there are a couple of things that you need to do. One is do well in your classes. Of course, that's something that you're like automatically, I'm aware of that. I've always been preparing for that. I've done it throughout my high school career, done it through my community college career, completely understand all that information. Um, so doing well in your courses is fantastic. But outside of just your coursework, we always encourage you guys to have that hands-on experience that you get involved to do research with faculty members, to join engineering student organizations, to get internships, to know and understand what UROC is and how UROC provides you with other additional research opportunities outside of just working one-on-one -on -one with faculty members and getting involved in doing engineering service learning as well. And so the way that it works at UC Merced is that all engineering student organizations fall under the umbrella of Vanguard Engineering Society. And Vanguard currently has 14 professional student organizations and they continue to grow. And the organizations can be things that are um, National Society of Black Engineers or things that are specific to majors. For example, the, um, the BMS, BMES, and other organizations that are tailored to do projects versus, versus um, more professional organizations. So you can get involved in a variety of different organizations on this campus. And that's one of the things I wanted to highlight here. So I've asked the Vanguard to provide us with a couple of students to be on a panel to be able to present to you guys what they do, who they are, what organizations they participate in, and to be able to kind of answer questions that you may have for 
future students, as future students or incoming students, um, and just kind of get a little bit of tips from them as well. So I have a list of, of panelists here that are going to come online right now, and they're going to present themselves and kind of talk to us about what they do. So I'm gonna go ahead and end my slideshow. I'll ask the panelists to come online and then we'll kind of start introducing them and answering your guys' questions. Awesome. Um, I guess we'll get started. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you guys for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Ethan Mercia. I'm a mechanical engineering student here at UC Merced. I'm currently going to be a fifth year, rising fifth year next year. As far as the organizations I'm uh, involved with, I'm involved with AIAA, which is the Aerospace Club here at the university, and I am also the president of Vanguard Engineering Society. Uh, we got a lot of things. I've seen a lot of cool questions on here. I'll continue sending this way, and I'll let everybody else introduce themselves. Uh, Justin, cool. thank, you. thank you, Ethan. Uh, my name is Justin Zabella. I am an incoming fourth year uh, mechanical engineering student. And along with being a part of Vanguard Engineer Society, I am also part of uh, the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, uh, SHIP, as well as uh, Engineers for a Sustainable World, or ESW. So, um, you know, two, two organizations and along with Vanguard that I'm really excited to be a part of as I enter my fourth year. Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Alexander Patillo. I'm currently a first year bioengineer major, and I'm part of Engineers uh, for Sustainable World as a president, and I, and I as well for Vanguard Engineering Society as vice president. Hi, um, I'm Loretta Camacho, but I also go by Lori. I am a incoming fifth year computer science major, um, and I am not only in Vanguard, but I'm also in SWE, the Society of Women Engineers. So it's nice to meet everyone. And then, hello, I'm Fernanda Robles, and I'm an incoming fourth year computer science major too. And I'm also a part of the Society of Women Engineers and the Vanguard Engineering Association. So welcome everyone. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Preeti. I am a fourth year computer science and engineering major and Last year, I served as the Vice President for the Society of Women Engineers, and this year I will be the Director of Professional Development for Vanguard Engineering Society, and we're super excited to talk to you all today. Wonderful. Thank you guys all for introducing yourselves and kind of giving us a little bit of information on you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask uh, Ricky to hop on and also help us with the Q&A portion of this. Thank you, Carla, and thank you to all of our expert panelists this evening. We have a lot of questions coming in, and to our audience members, please take advantage of that Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and go ahead and keep sending those questions in. Right now, what I'd like to do is go ahead and start off with this first one, and Carla, this might be more directed to you. How are the intern opportunities or internship opportunities for CSE? Yeah, so I think in general, internship opportunities is going to be something that comes up a lot. And I see some of the students are shaking their heads as well with me. So we have a lot of opportunities on this campus. But the main way that we encourage students is, one, by joining an engineering student organization. A lot of these are professional organizations that provide you guys with an opportunity to go to large conferences and to interact with industry partners. For example, I know SHIP and SWE all offer um, big national conferences and regional conferences that allow you to interact with that. And I'll ask one of the students in a second to come on and kind of talk about attending that conference if they've attended one, and then kind of giving us their perspective on that. The other way that we encourage you to get involved in internship opportunities is to join um, one of Liz Ateliano, who is our career professional, um, advisor for the School of Engineering, one of her listservs, or to go in and participate and sign up for the Career Center. And they offer a lot of different opportunities to interact with industry partners and also to know about internship opportunities that are coming up. So I'll ask one of the students if anybody has participated in uh, one of their um, conferences, if they could come on and kind of tell us what that experience is like. I guess I can speak on the whole uh, virtual, I guess, the remote experience that kind of went on last year. And that was actually my first uh, conference that I attended for SHIP. Um, as Carla stated, SHIP is uh, one RCO that 
you know, host, or not host, but um, is able to bring a lot of students to a, re a conference nationally. And at these conferences, you're able to network, uh, communicate, and really um, have a high possibility of scoring an internship with a, like hundreds of companies, um, you know, that are that are there, you know. And it really is in all facets of engineering, you know, if you if it, there's uh, if you're into like aerospace or um, more like aviation, there's you know they have Boeing, Lockheed, pretty much anything that you can think of in that space, um, and more. And so. It's 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 a little it is a little crazy going to a conference just because you know the sheer amount of people, um, and I think like at first at first it looks a little nerve wracking or it could be like a little intimidating trying to or just thinking about trying to like um, interact with so many other people so many other companies but honestly it's a really amazing experience and one that I'm really glad that I took part in and hopefully again we'll take part in uh, this upcoming year um, because as I said ship does it every year nationally and. Virtually, it was different because it was more of like a, a webinar type thing and you would kind of hop in and you would kind of have to wait in line or have like have a seat available. And when it was your turn, you'd be able to go and interact and have like a little 10 minute um, interview with, you know, these companies, these uh, recruiters. And so, it was, again, it was really amazing experience. And I know, you know, in person, it's kind of just even better because, you know, it's a little hard at times maybe to, to try to interact like through screen, but definitely in person, it's um it's a really it's a really cool experience. and. I know uh, some of my other fellow board members who are here also have um, can speak on that. Here, I'm going to just jump on that real quick. I'm going to say ditto to everything what Justin said, and then add on to the fact that there's going to be two for sure conferences here in California, and they jump from California to Florida. Great Minds in STEM is going to be in, our, in October here down in Riverside, and then AIAA, which is the aerospace one, they're going to be in San Diego. So, and those are most of the organizations have already acquired a certain amount of funding to aid you guys in getting those registration fees down or completely covered. Uh, really what falls on the individual students is sometimes either housing costs or traveling down you as groups, but usually we make that really cheap. We get the Airbnb and honestly, it's only like 20 bucks, so it's not that bad. So then food is probably your most expensive thing. Um, I wanna say a big thing that definitely the organizations provide a great opportunity in development is how you guys interact with these companies. I highly recommend you guys go your freshman year uh, with the expectation that you guys are gonna grow, not only in like seeing where the competition's at, because you're not just getting people from California, you're getting people flying out from different areas. And if COVID does decide to you know, cool off, the intention is that we're gonna be in person. So you're gonna have a nice breath to see so many different people, the levels of competency at different majors, different people coming in, it's it's super enlightening. So even if you don't get an internship or a job, you come out so educated, which is great. I think the last thing I want to touch on what Ethan talked about conferences is that they do prepare you ahead of hand. I know for SHIP, it was, you know, literally like two months before the conference, you know, you're already kind of having weekly meetings um, as an organization and kind of just brushing up on, you know, the questions that they might ask, um, interview like tips and tricks, um, going over your resume extensively um, ahead of the conference. So it's not, don't ever think that you would be prepared um, if you decide to go, you know, either through an organization or even just by yourself, is that there's a lot of resources there to help you out, um, you know, to get ready for a conference like that. So you don't feel so overwhelmed. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for that. Would we be able to get someone to speak a little bit about the Society for Women Engineers? Yeah, I can definitely hop on that because I know there are a lot of questions related to computer science internships. So I had the opportunity to attend the SWE National Conference in 2019 and 2020. 2019 was in person down in Anaheim and 2020 was virtual. And I think the really big thing that prepared me for interviews during that conference was understanding the conference layout. There are seminars and different talks, lightning talks that students can attend, whether it's like latest, um, latest involvements in AI or like deep learning. And there are also, there's a really big career fair. And 
And what a, what a lot of companies do beforehand is they reach out to students attending the conference and they they ask you like, hey, we'd like to schedule re uh, an interview. And you do a lot of research before a conference on which companies are coming, which companies are hiring for summer internships. And you also prepare for those behavioral and technical interviews. And then once you get to the conference, um, you go to the career fair, you have your pre-scheduled interviews. And also there are a lot of companies who schedule interviews on site, which means you can walk around, talk to recruiters. If they like your um, resume, your elevator pitch, they can schedule an interview for that week. And then um, you'll attend your interviews and then usually hear back a couple weeks after. So going to conferences, in my personal opinion, has been a really has given me a leg up when it comes to internships versus like mass applying um, online. In addition to that, it's also, as I mentioned, the lightning talks are really great to attend, as well as like the energy meeting like different engineers from all over the country at a national conference is an experience like it's an no other and going looking at 2021 this year's conference it it's in the talks of being hybrid so definitely professionalism skills um online and offline in person go hand in hand so going to a conference and really attending general meetings for any of these rcos can help you kind of see if going to a conference is something you'd want to do in the future Wonderful. Thank you all so much for that great insight about those programs and internships. Let's move on to the next question. Also, just feel free anytime throughout this program, if you guys have something in addition that you'd like to add, feel free to toss that in. This event is specially designed for our audience, for our incoming students, specifically in the School of Engineering. So if at any, any point some idea pops into your head, just feel free to go ahead and add that in just in case we don't get to something and you have an opportunity. So the next question I'd like to toss out to our panel, what are the best practices for incoming students to prepare over the summer to be successful engineering majors? Okay, uh, I'll jump on that real quick. Uh, in general, what you guys want to get used to is figuring out how to make a schedule. I'm going to say that first, keeping yourself organized. So I recommend start looking at how well you guys are going to be organizing yourselves. If you guys haven't thought about summer session yet, it may or not be too late for that. I don't know. It depends. But that would actually be a good opportunity for you guys to figure out how you guys study. Uh, I did summer session coming into pre oh, my freshman year, so I recommend doing that. Um, the second thing is realizing that you, some people need to take things in steps. Uh, don't rush things that you don't feel too confident in. Take things step by steps and make sure that you guys make measurable and specific goals that are realistic. Uh, that way you guys can be slowly moving forward and you don't get stuck in the runs. Um, so I'll, I would I would keep a more positive mindset. It's more of an individual mentality kind of thing, not necessarily engineering specific, but definitely keep that in mind as you guys start planning out. Uh, and it also start figuring out what you like in terms of technology development. And that way, once you guys start reaching out into organizations, you guys can be like, oh, I like CAD design. I like uh, circuits. I like actually programming. So just trying to figure out what you guys want to do that way, you guys can start talking to the right people as soon as possible. Like I, I would like to add what Ethan has said, like um, about where, where your interests are currently, because as right now as freshmen, you have the time to explore uh, your major or your interests. Like if you would like to help the environment and become an environmental engineer, look for clubs that have like environmental engineering stuff, like. ESW, we build like systems that is very sustainable, like our hydroponic system. Or in the, further in the past, we have built like a solar powered tractor as well. Or if you like space or build airplanes, go for ALAA and stuff. If you like to work in medicine, go for Biomedical Engineering Society. Just explore, man. <laughs> Plan of time for you guys. I completely agree. And I would like to add on to there about summer courses, the academic aspect of it is that um, if you do want to take summer classes, you can. You could always take summer classes at your local community college, or you can also take summer courses at UC Merced. I see that um, if you're interested in taking summer classes to first contact the Students First Center and they can help you out with that. I see that Lisa has dropped that into the chat for everybody to be able to kind of um, get a little bit more information on that. So you can do it. It's just part of it is figuring out what classes to take. So you would need to contact your academic advisor regarding that. 
for all my first year students, you guys are hosted by the Bob Canna Advising Center and you'd want to reach out to them and make sure that you're taking courses there. Some preparatory courses that you might want to take during the summer might be pre-calculus um, or Chem 001, which is the introduction to chemistry. So there are some classes that you can take. And so if you want to do that, please feel free to reach out to your academic advisor at the Bobcat Advising Center. For any of my transfer students for the School of Engineering, again, I am your academic advisor. So reach out to me and I will be reaching out to you guys pretty soon as well. I know that you will be registering in classes at the end of this month. So look out for the emails that will come from your academic advisor in about two-ish, three weeks you'll get an email from your academic advisor about that and your enrollment window is at the end of this month again. Wonderful, thank you all so much again. And just a quick reference, we do have that chat box available for you to uh, take a look at those links and all the contact information that we're sending out to you. And then if you have questions and you'll be using the Q&A button to send questions in to us. And just a quick recap for summer session, we do have a website, summersession.ucmerced.edu. Again, the link is in the chat for you for quick convenience. And the Students First Center contact information is there as well. We do still have session B and C of summer session available and summer session this year is available online exclusively. So just some fun facts for you before you take a look at more information on the website. All right, so let's move on to our next question. So to our student panel, what type of computer languages have you learned in the computer science program? All right, um, so some languages that we've learned are Java, I think is the first language. Wait, hold on, I'm kidding. I think the new computer science division um, changed it so that your first language will be Python if you were to start now. But um, when I started, I learned Java first. And then there were like CSE 15 taught us Python um, and like LaTeX, which is like the type of like math um, documentation style. It's cool. <laughs> and then we also learned C, C++. Um, I think if you get into any higher divisions, you learn stuff like C sharp. Um, I'm not entirely sure. There's also MEPS, which is like um, a type of program that's just assembly language. Um, that's not really used, but it's good for learning. Um, what else does anyone, my CSC majors, do you guys have any other languages that I missed? Um, again, like how you mentioned, like the upper division courses get more like specific, like specifically like for the database classes that's done in like SQLite. Yeah. Um, it really depends on the upper division course. Um, one tip I'd give to like incoming CSC freshman or if you're considering CSC is just like look up like UC Merced fall 2021 um, classes and you'll be able to like filter by computer science and engineering and you can see the description of what each CSC class is as well as like what language they're going to be using so you can get a better idea that way too and like how Lori mentioned they recently restructured the CSC program so your intro to programming class will now be in um, Python and they're making it a lot more real world applicable so that when you apply to internships, you kind of have a more foundational and holistic view of what industry is like. Yeah. Yeah. And if you guys want to get it, um, a little bit of advanced work, um, maybe like check out GitHub, like figure out how that works, because that's a really nice way to like put all your projects in one place and also like recruiters or for like internships and stuff, they'll they'll definitely ask you like, hey, what projects have you done? Um, and you can all just refer to them to your GitHub. So yeah, if you guys are down, try that. Would I be able to, would I be able to add something quickly? I really loved with what Preeti and Lori said. Um, they're amazing, and definitely for a CSC major, um, there's going to be a lot more programs that you are looking at uh, throughout your undergraduate um, career. But you know, I. And anyone who's going into mechanical engineering or any other mechanical engineering or any other engineering major, um, you guys aren't off the hook because there's also programs that you guys will have to learn. I know as a mechanical engineering major, income as I income as I go into my fourth year, I think MATLAB has been one that like I've seen a lot of as a mechanical engineering major. And in my second year, um, they kind of introduce you. There's an intro to Python and MATLAB, so you also learn Python as well, uh, like Lori and Preeti said. So. Just because you're not maybe CSC doesn't mean that you're not going to see programming in some variety, you know, as you go through school. 
um, because it's, it's always there and it's really important. You know, even if you don't have like too, too much knowledge in it, um, you know, you can always, there's always resources out there. There's always programs and there's always people to talk to if you really are interested in learning about it just to get prepared or just, you know, to have something to add on to your kind of resume or, you know, anything moving forward. It's always good to just have a little bit of knowledge. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, math lab is for like math too. So if anyone's thinking of being a math major, you're gonna also need math lab. Yeah. yeah. And I, I just wanna quickly add because this kind of general topic addresses like a lot of questions in the chat. Um, I saw a question, um, do you need to know coding before you start as a freshman at UC Merced? No, I think the biggest thing that a lot of my CSC professors have iterated has been you want to have that desire to like learn more. If you run into a bug or an issue, you want to be able to figure out how to troubleshoot or resolve it. So having that intellectual curiosity to kind of figure out a solution is just the big thing that any engin any engineer should have, regardless if you're CSC or not. And um, I also saw another question, how can you prepare for like as an incoming freshman? Because you're always like, what, what can I do to like stand out? I think it's definitely because I know you guys are doing like class registration over the summer. Once you know like what CSC class you're in, maybe looking at like some documentation for the programming language that will be used, just so you're a little bit more familiar. Don't like self study the whole thing over the summer. You definitely want to take some time for yourself and like recharge before fall semester, but just learning a little bit about the documentation itself, um, the syntax, which the syntax is basically the specific stylistic elements for a sp particular coding language can definitely help. And just remember, like you guys can do it. You guys are taking the right steps by coming to this, these types of events. So yeah, good luck. You guys are going to do awesome. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So now let's move into a little bit of a related area. So we have some questions coming in in general about uh, what type of computer program requirements or recommendations do you have? So that's kind of more referring to hardware and software. So the School of Engineering does have a policy regarding that and I'll drop that off in the um, chat so that you guys have what the School of Engineering faculty recommend that you guys have as part of that. But I'll let the students kind of give their personal recommendations. Yeah, eight gigabytes RAM is pretty much uh, what you would want. 256 uh, solid state drive. I would recommend that. Um, you don't have to worry too much about graphics on your, on your monitor, so don't worry about that. You're not gonna be a graphic designer uh, unless you want to look at your, when you're catting, uh, you want to make sure that you know when you're rendering your, your, your part, you want it to look good. I mean, if you want that, it's up to you. Um, let's see, other than that, an i7, or the equivalent to the AMC one for the i7, I think you would want to get that. Uh, i5 is starting to become obsolete in the sense, it's, it's still widely utilized, but i5s are now kind of comparable to just want to do like home, very simple business-like applications. And i7 now is a little bit nicer because especially for mechanical engineers, when you're running simulations on SOLIDWORKS, you don't want that thing to crash on you. <laughs> there was times where my computer just shut down before I, I upgraded, so um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, an i7 could be slow depending on what other hardware you have, um, but it depends. A lot of engineers, what they decide to do is build their own computer from scratch instead of buying off the shelf. So if you guys got some extra cash, definitely do that, uh, but it's actually a good opportunity uh, for you guys to to, have, to follow your, your interest in that sense, because I've never been interested enough to do that. I've always been like, okay, what, what do I need just, just to get the job done? So if you're like that, then just look up general specs. There's actually a calculator online that does simulations for you. And that's what you I use to guide me to get my computer. So I got an Alienware R13. So yeah, I'll turn it over. Wow, okay, Ethan, <laughs> I see you. <laughs> um, at least I don't mean to hug if anyone wants to talk about specs, but at least for computer science, um, I feel like if you go Windows or uh, Linux um, or just Apple, either way is fine. You're, you're good with using either of them. I don't recommend getting a Chromebook if you're gonna be a computer science major purely because you can't use like any of those like third-party applications like um, VS Code or um, what's the other thing? I'm not, I'm not too sure. 
but personally I have a Mac. Um, so um, you can use like Xcode with that. And um, a, lot of, a lot of the CSC professors don't tell anyone, they, they use Macs. So like, it's a little bit easier to set things up or if they like have like um, instructions, they'll have like Mac ready instructions, but you're totally good using Windows as well. Like no, no shade, no tea. Um, but I feel like low key for um, mechanical engineers, um, you might be better off using a, um, a Windows computer. Cause I noticed that um, when I took a circuits class, they used a like a program called Orchid, or I don't know if you guys remember what I'm talking about, but um, they like didn't have the software for Macs. So like if you like I personally couldn't use it, I had to use like a different software, and it was just kind of a pain, um, especially for my like classmates who were my teammates. So um, yeah, that's that's stuff to keep in mind um, for different majors. But yeah, like Ethan said, like eight, gig, eight gigs of RAM is pretty good. Per, like I personally think for CS, like 16 gigs of RAM is pretty ideal, um, especially if you're running a super like big file. Um, if you want to go 32, okay, you can. But 16 is is a pretty good <laughs> is a pretty good um, baseline. Like graphics cards, you don't have to worry about too much either. Um, and I think any computer that you buy like now will have at least like an i7 chip, like, or an i, i9, I think, I'm not too sure. Those are for like Intel, AMD chips. If, if no one knows what I'm talking about, it's totally fine. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my input. Um, anyone else? I just want to add just one thing onto that. Um, yeah, uh, you, you just realize you can put an, if you have a Mac, you can put a dual operating system onto that. You guys can explore that. And that way you can still run Windows on your Mac. Yeah. Um, but just know it, it does decrease its capability to a certain extent. Um, I'm going to rephrase my 8 gigabyte to 16 gigabyte, especially when it gets to the simulations for when you're using SolidWorks. Yeah. 16 is nice. But just know it jumps in price from 8 to 16. Like it, it goes to, to the $1,000 range now. Uh, especially if you're getting, I think, like a 256 solid state drive. That's, uh, yeah. So be mindful. Work this summer. Get some experience. <laughs> then go buy your laptop. <laughs> yeah. There is also the laptop policy that's available for students through financial aid. So just also know that you could get as part of your finance, it comes as part of your financial aid packet as it is a requirement that all school of engineering students have that. Um, so just, <laughs> you don't have to go work. It's also you can involve it in part of your financial aid package. Yeah. Also, the, the the computers at the university are actually pretty good. They're actually. I was, I was gonna say, coming from someone who like their first and second year didn't really like, I didn't really know anything about, and I still am like a like a new a newbie about like laptops and like specs in general. Someone from, coming from someone who didn't really have any of that experience, I kind of just like lived in like the labs. Um, that you attend like for your classes a lot of classes have like in your lab session um, if it's like CAD based or any anything that has to do with like programming stuff they usually open up like that lab time is for you to be able to go into like the, the actual labs and like use the computers and so my first and second year that's just kind of where I lived and it was like I would try to just get all like my either my coding or like any of my design stuff done during the lab session because I knew I didn't have <laughs> I know I didn't have a computer to go back to and like work on it on my own so um, definitely take advantage of that like lab time if you you know if that's again that's not, not all classes have like a lab where you actually have to go and go in and like use the computers but um, if you do take one you know as an undergraduate as an, as an engineering major um, you know definitely <laughs> take advantage of that because they have all that they have all the programs all the like all the design um, programs you know on the computers already for you guys to use. Very good, wonderful responses from everybody. You guys are making my job easy tonight. <laughs> All right, so the next question coming up, can some of you touch a little bit on what types of projects that you've done in your classes? Okay, I'll go real quick. Um, okay, in classes, I think the big, most notable one for mechanical engineers is your bridge project during statics and dynamics. That one is, it's actually pretty fun. You do have to put in work. And so you actually, 
have to design a bridge to fail. So you have you have this limit, and it has to fail between this limit. And if it doesn't, you fail. That's basically what it is. And you actually build the bridge, and you go to uh, a lab on campus, and you actually simulate the force that is actually bringing down on the members at the trusses. And then if it actually breaks where you expect it to break, because you do the calculations, then you get max points. And then there's also a report to it. Um, so that one's actually pretty fun. And that's pretty much what I got up to yet. I have other projects I can talk about, but to answer that question, that's what I got. Yeah, going off of Ethan, that's kind of, that's kind of like the first big project that you kind of um, deal with, you know, if you do mechanical engineering. Um, so it's, I think it's a very, it's a very good one. It's, it's fun because, you know, it's a group project and you kind of are building a bridge to fail. Um, but you're, you utilize a lot of just like your basic, um, like force equations type things. And, you know, they, they, they teach you that in the statics and dynamics course, but um, it's really more like simple, like forces in the X and Y direction and, you know, sum of forces and all that. So that's a, it's a really good, like, it's a really good project. Very good. Those sound like great projects. All right. So another question is coming in about some of the student clubs that you guys are a part of. One of them specifically about SHIP, which of course stands for Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. And Justin, did you mention you were a part of that? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, was it a specific question for something or was it just kind of like talking uh, about? Kind of a general just overview, but also the specific question they were asking is if there was any type of funding made available for students to attend the national conferences, but also if you can do an overview, that would be great. Yes, so um, it's, just, it's right now it is known as SHIP. Before when I joined, it was Ingenieros Unidos, and that was back in like my fresh, the end of my freshman year. But it has like since kind of gone through like a, like a national kind of like renaming. And so now it just falls under SHIP. Um, and so there is a chapter at UC Merced, which I'm a part of. I am actually like the Vanguard representative for SHIP. So it kind of like my, my board position in Vanguard and my board position in SHIP kind of go just like hand in hand. But um, in terms of uh, the question about funding for the national conference. Yes, that is how actually I was able to attend uh, it last year is um, SHIP does, SHIP works really hard to gain funding and they're able to actually send, um, it really depends each year, but I know when I went, they were able to send at least 45 students, just like they paid for the, the ticket um, and they paid for application. And because it was, if it would have been like in person, um, I think all you would have to have paid for was just like the, the room and board, but um, virtually I was able to get it all just like completely taken care of. And they do have a lot of grants and, that, and that's how you like, you fill out an application if you're interested in attending the conference and you just have an interview with kind of like the current board members. And you know, if they, if they like you and they think that um, you're a good fit, then, then you're chosen. And like I said, they sent, they were able to send 45 to 50 students, I believe last time. So it's not like, it's not like you're ever alone. It's if you really want to go and you know you're a part of ship, even if you're not a part of ship, we're actually able to send people who weren't like currently part of like the actual ship and just people who are interested. So it's just something, and like we kind of talked about earlier, if it's something that you're interested in and something that it kind of fits with what you would want to do, um, definitely reach out, you know, because it's not just ship who is able to send people to the ship national conference. There's um SWE is able to send people, send people to the national conference. So is AI, AIAA. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that insight, Justin. So another question I'd like to toss out here, and Carla, maybe you can help us with this one. Do we have an average class size within the engineering classes? It varies from major to major. Um, so we do have large classrooms, and some of our students can attest to their entry-level classrooms tend to be very large, and some of even the upper division computer science and engineering Lectures tend to be very large. What we do on this campus for those large components or those large um, lectures is that we do have smaller discussion sections or smaller lab components. So for example, we take a large CSC class, it might have somewhere between 150 to 160 students in the lecture itself, but the lab itself is composed of 30 students. So you go into a, a a computer lab and that is 30 students where you have the interaction between uh, the student and 
the TA, the teaching assistant, or possibly even the faculty member, depends on who teaches that, that discussion section or that lab component. So we do have some large classrooms, but we also try to, to get that small discussion section available to you guys. Great, thanks Carla. And if I can stick with you for just a moment, can you give us a little bit of an overview about civil engineering? We have a lot of varied questions coming in about that major. I know because it's a new major. We don't really have too much information to provide you guys with. So it is a brand new major. It is starting and it's gonna be wonderful. Faculty are very active in this major. And because it is gonna be a small cohort to begin with, you will go into what's called CEE 001. So all my civil and my environmental engineering students will go into a one course. It is an introduction to it. It introduces you to what the major is all about. It tries to give you a little bit more experience from the faculty perspective of what you to expect within the major and um, how to prepare for the major. So it'll provide you that. My mechanical engineering students will also have the opportunity to have an introduction course, which is ME001 as well. My bioengineering students will also have an introductory course, which is BioE001 as well. So you all will be able to participate in that. And the purpose of this is that A, you get interaction with faculty members and B, that you understand what the major you're getting yourself into is. MSC, you guys are such a tight knit group of students that I feel like you have the most hands-on faculty relationships possible in the School of Engineering. And I don't know if one of my, if, um, if I think, um, we don't have an MSc student here, but it is one of the majors that is the smallest uh, for the School of Engineering, but it is the most tight-knit major as well, and you get the most hands-on experience with your faculty members just because of the number of students it is. And so the CE major, we're expecting it to be similar in that sense that you will have a lot of faculty interaction throughout your time is it is still a brand new major and it's starting off and accreditation is starting with you guys as well. So look forward to it. There will be a, quite a bit coming your way. You'll get, the, you'll get the essence of civil engineering, but it does still have that environmental aspect of it. Very good, thank you so much for that. I hope that gets to everyone's question or most of those about that subject. I know we had quite a few coming in. So thanks Carla, that was very in depth, especially considering it's a new major, <laughs> great job. All right, so as we are nearing, I think this has been the fastest hour of an event I've ever been a part of. That's gone by so quickly, so much great information. So I think what we'd like to do to wrap up and I'll start with Ethan, can you give us one word or one word of advice that you would give for a student to come in and be successful as a first year? One word would have to be uh, development. Uh, it, a lot of students, what you guys got to realize as engineering students coming in, you guys are going into a area that's very competitive. And in order to stand out, you guys need to focus on your guys' development in terms of professional, technical, uh, maturity. Um, and professional development, by the way, it's like how you interact with companies, resumes, interviews. And a technical is like project-based stuff. So if you're gonna do research, you can get involved with organizations that offer you project-based experiences. Those are what you wanna do starting off as early as possible. Because the worst thing that happens, and I see it all the time, is that when you have when you're in your junior or senior year and you have nothing on your resume and you start going to conferences, you're at the same, you are at the same point as a freshman. You have no experience. And so, and that's not to stress you guys out. You guys got time. But understand that uh, there is a rhythm, there is a pattern that you guys should try to follow to make you guys successful. And to kind of aid that, I'm actually gonna push a form into you guys' chat. That way you, we can try to connect you with all the engineering organizations that you guys are interested in, okay? So I'm gonna push that right now and then I'll let uh, Justin uh, talk about that, um, his, his word. I think I would just say, and it kind of goes with Ethan said is patience because you guys are all incoming, trans, uh, in, not transfer, incoming first year students. Um, and you have a lot of time to kind of, I think who said it, Michael said it earlier, kind of explore your major. And I think even as a fourth year, I still am kind of trying to be open-minded and have patience about what I wanna do, um, you know, after I graduate or even just throughout this year in my fourth year. So as incoming, as incoming freshmen, you know, have patience in the sense that you might not know what you wanna do 
right off the coming right off the bat. Um, you know, it takes time and you don't have to rush into anything um, that you don't want to, you know. Very good. Lori, would you like to go next? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm going to have a very CS response. <laughs> um, I think sorting. Um, I know that sounds great, like weird, like why sorting? Well, like a lot, of, like a lot of CS problems and a lot of problems in real life, like you have to sort through, you know, all of this information. Um, like obviously today you guys probably were bombarded by all this like new stuff and you like have to sort and like reflect on like what is more valuable to you. And for each case, um, some things are more valuable, some things aren't, and you just kind of have to keep going, um, keep like progressing through your, your sorting problem until like you get to um, a destination and what that destination is, who knows? Um, but yeah, like just keep going. Um, and you know, some problems are a lot harder than others. Um, and some problems take, you know, ON. Um, they take a lot of time and some just, you know, are solved instantly. So yeah, just, you know, just take it as it comes. So that, yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you so much. Let's head over to Michael. Hello again. Um, my word will be motivation. Because from my experience of being like for almost five years, I've been part of UC Merced School of, of Engineering. Oh, sorry about that. Um, like, I learned a lot. Like, I met Ethan, met Justin, Loretta, Fernanda, Preeti, Nathan, everybody else is like, you guys are doing like great work, like being part of RCOs or be part of clubs, be part of internships, be part of research. Like you're learning a lot and that keeps me motivated like to do things for this role. Like you want to be more, uh, be more sustainable, you want to go to medicine, you want to go for space, aeronautics, uh, civil engineering, computer science. There's whole opportunities for you guys. But like uh, us over time, you may lose uh, your spark of joy. <laughs> With all, a, lot of, a lot of things are in third year or fourth year, but like, but what's great about this major or this whole school engineering, like everybody is with you. Like everybody's here to support you. There's vanguards to help you out. Like we have an idea that you want to make, we could do that for you. Or like if, or want to make it some kind of group, we're here for you. And that's what great, great about being an engineer. We're always motivated, we're always focused. We get things done. Wonderful, thank you so much, Michael. And next up, Preeti. Well, um, one thing I think, definitely take this time over the summer to form really strong, well thought out goals for looking back after these four years or after you graduate from UC Merced, what do you want to accomplish? And I think really thinking about your goals and what you want to do and what impact you want to make can really help you get in the right mindset for college because it's, it's very different from high school. But other than that, definitely plus one to what all the other panelists have said. Amazing job to all of our panelists. What inspiration was shared tonight? I'm so excited for all of our incoming Bobcats. Hopefully this has been a great way for them to get a little bit of insight for the School of Engineering. Right now, I'd like to pass things over to my colleague, Lisa Perry, to give us a little bit more information about what the Students First Center has to offer and any other insight that she may have. Lisa? Hello, and thank you for joining us tonight. As Ricky said, this was a really quick, fast-paced webinar, which was really exciting. Um, so I'm Lisa Perry. I'm the director of our Students First Center, and our Students First Center is your one-stop shop for questions about admissions, financial aid, registration, and billing. And I saw some questions coming in tonight about financial aid, about admissions documents, placement exams, test scores. So if you have questions about those things, please give us a call or email us or chat us. I dropped the Students First Center um, contact info um, in, oh, and Amy just dropped it in the chat too. Um, we've got a, a, a we get back to you pretty quickly. And if we can't answer it, we will get you to someone that can. So we're always a good place to start. 
Um, also use your checklist found in your Connect account, which is your student portal. Um, there were questions coming in about when students are gonna register. You, um, as Carla said, you'll get an email from your academic advisor later this month with information on course recommendations, along with um, instructions on registration. And then um, Thursday night this week from seven to eight, same time. Uh, I wanna say same time, same place, same Batman time, right? Um, so we're gonna be doing a planning ahead for your bill webinar. There's not gonna be any live Q and A because we're really early in this process, but it's gonna include a demo and a bunch of self-help tools so that you can start planning ahead and start answering um, some of those questions you might have in, in your head and, and just kind of you know getting to know what you need to know now and when you need to start making decisions. Um, an email will be going out with that information very soon. Amy just said, check your email tomorrow for that invite and we'll record it and we'll post it. And then just to let you all know too, orientation um, starts early July, late June. You all should have signed up for an orientation session. If you haven't, contact Students First Center and we'll tell you where to do that. Um, but orientation is gonna go over all of this in more detail. So don't worry, this isn't your last opportunity to ask questions. There's still a lot more to come. And then Amy and Ricky's fabulous team also sends out monthly newsletters to all the new students. So be sure that you're checking your email regularly um, and reading those newsletters because there's a lot of information in it. And again, if you have more questions, contact the Students First Center. And if we can't answer you, we will filter you out to where you need to be. Great job, Lisa, as always. And yes, I second, third, and fourth that Student First Center is the best. I used to work in that department. I'm slightly biased, but they will be able to answer almost any question. And if they can't, they will definitely connect you and sometimes even walk you to that office. So it's a great place to start. If you forget everything else, remember the Student First Center and they will definitely get you connected. All right, so let me toss things over to Carla for her last word of advice for all of our new incoming students. All right, so you guys have heard so much great things coming out of the School of Engineering, how students get involved, um, and some tips on how to like succeed in the School of Engineering. One last thing is remember that engineers have a lot of passion and desire to continue onward. They tend to work on a project for hours on end and probably will then the next day come back and work on the hours on end again. So the desire and the passion of it starts now with your entry level classes. If you find that you're not as passionate or you're not like enjoying the classes as much, start talking to your academic advisor, start talking to your peers and don't be afraid to change majors. It's okay to change majors any, any time um, during your academic career. You are looking for something that you want to be passionate about and that you really want to work hours on end doing. So keep that in mind as you guys move forward. You'll hear from your academic advisors. You'll always contact the Students First Center should you need anything. And have a wonderful evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Carla, Lisa, all of our expert panelists this evening. What an amazing event for the School of Engineering to get everyone off on the right foot or off, off onto the right paw because you're now Bobcat. And to get you started for the fall 2021, where we are very excited to be starting our return to campus. Just a quick note, and I will go ahead and drop this into the chat as well. We have a lot of these types of webinars and virtual events that we provide to you. And a good way to stay connected with us in case you happen to not see an email or a newsletter, if you just don't happen to see that come through, or you just happen to miss it, then you can also take a look at the Instagram and the Twitter accounts for the admissions office. And I went ahead and dropped those into the chat. The UC Merced admissions office, the Twitter account is go to UC Merced with the number two and Instagram is at life at UC Merced. We try to post as much as we can there, not only just about events, but other fun facts and of course, beautiful pictures of our campus. So make sure that you follow along. We will also be uh, quickly doing a couple more of our Instagram live campus tours and giving you an insight into housing. So there's lots of fun things and programming coming up. Once again, thank you all so much for joining us. We had a great turnout tonight. Wonderful questions were asked and answered. My name is Ricky Hill, and it's been my great pleasure to moderate this event. On behalf of all of my colleagues at the University of California Merced, have a great night. Thank you so much for joining us.